just it. kill me. For the spirit of gratitude for the people I work with, that's why I said it's Bob Bowling. One million three hundred sixty thousand dollars. Not kidding, that's what it says right there. <laughs> Questa Locke wrote one million five hundred eighteen thousand. Uh, Jen Stock up moving Ala moving Alaska. Is that right? Uh, why am I blanking on who goes with everything today? One million five hundred seventy-eight thousand. Kylie Lucas wrote one million five hundred ninety-nine thousand. Vicky Hudson just man, I mean she just every month just okay, prints it up. One million seven hundred fifty-five thousand seven hundred thirty-five. Come home Anchorage had a great month. One million nine hundred thirty-seven. Uh, Mary Jo and crew, one million nine hundred thirty-nine thousand three hundred twenty. Kevin Cross and Associates, two million five hundred forty-nine thousand. Brandy Pennington wrote two million five hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred. Team Dimmick wrote two million six hundred twenty-five thousand. Joe Bell, who I think just finished their last baseball game in Arizona yesterday, I saw it in the paper, two million nine hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred. Did anybody see David Ortiz walk off? Grand oh. Slam. No, you just don't watch the Boston Red Sox. Oh, it's football season. It's <laughs> AL Championship Series. The price of the baseball. That was pretty insane. Grand Slam. The Erickson Group, three million sixty thousand five hundred fifty. Chris Drusido, three million two hundred twenty-six thousand eight hundred. Kristen Cole, three million three hundred three thousand nine hundred. Unity Home Groups, six million five hundred forty thousand one hundred. And the Reed Moore Group topped us off with nine million four hundred fifty thousand eight hundred five. Okay, that's what you wrote. Let's talk about what you closed. Even though it's ancient history now. Uh, the Wise Bear Group closed five hundred seven thousand five hundred. Christina Gomez five hundred twenty one thousand. Stuart Smith five hundred thirty thousand seven. Eight Star Realtors, that's Caroline and Diane, I know that. $575,000. Felisa, close $581,000. Jim Kachowski, uh, $601,000. Michelle Sanford, $650,000. Dave Brown, $700,000. I was used to read all these words out loud. Bob Bolding, $1,368,000. Craig Bennett, $749,900. Mary Jo, $800,000. Brandy Pennington closed eight hundred nineteen thousand nine hundred. Patrick James closed eight hundred eighty-two thousand nine twenty-three. Uh, Joe Lowndes, A to Z, nine hundred ten thousand nine hundred ninety. David Armstrong in Seattle closed nine hundred forty-five thousand. Close it here, but it was in Seattle. Les Bailey and Associates, nine hundred fifty-eight thousand five hundred. Come home, Anchorage team, nine hundred seventy-six. Schwartz closed one million thirty-seven thousand four hundred. Amy Mackey Hornet closed one million forty thousand nine. <laughs> Diet and Company closed one million fifty-seven thousand. Lorna Cochran closed one million one hundred forty-seven thousand five hundred fifty. The Pooling Group closed one million two hundred nineteen thousand four hundred. Heidi Lucas Team one million two hundred thirty-eight thousand. Marcy Bouchard closed one million three hundred twenty-two thousand one fifty. Sorry, I threw you there, didn't I? Right. You had to pay attention. It's kind of dark outside. Wake up. Brandy Croom closed one million four hundred forty-nine thousand four hundred. Larry Malden had an awesome month. Closed one million four hundred eighty-six thousand five hundred. Jacob Sebring had a nice month. One million six hundred forty-eight thousand nine hundred. <laughs> July Leslie had a great month. She closed one million six hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred fifty. Kareem Muir, one million six hundred seventy-five thousand five fifty. Mark Mandigo, one million six hundred ninety-two thousand. The Radford Group, one million eight hundred thirty-eight thousand fifty-two. Beth Simpson, two million one hundred twenty-three thousand. <coughs> Joe Bell, Alaska Real Estate Team, two million two hundred fifty-four thousand two hundred fifty. Vicki Hudson, two million three hundred thirty thousand three hundred eight. Costa Lot closed two million four hundred twenty-six thousand. Chris Drusido two million five hundred twenty-five thousand nine hundred. Move in Alaska Jen Stock up two million five hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred. Kristen Cole closed two million six hundred six thousand nine hundred. Dar Walden two million seven hundred nineteen thousand three hundred. Don't know where that went. I think it's on Dar. It goes on Dar. Dar, I think. It does today. 
The sticky is losing. I know. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to stick and talk at the same time. It wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The Erickson group four million. Jacob, do you want to just take over today? No, you're doing an awesome job. <laughs> yeah. Four million nine hundred thirty-nine thousand four hundred. Read more closed not seven million nine hundred seven thousand eight hundred fifty, and the Unity Home Group closed ten million nine hundred sixty thousand. So pretty amazing stuff. So here's my question for you guys, and I want to kind of focus a little bit before we, you know, we'll get you out of here a few minutes early today, on motivation. Um, okay, you're just going to have to bear with it. Sorry, you won't hear it again for three more years high school football analogies, you're stuck with them, that's just the way it is. So watching my kids play, my son play this weekend, they're in the state quarterfinals, fourth quarter hits, those of you who watch football, what happens? What do the players do? Start a fourth quarter. What do you see? Remember, they, all the kids holding it up. Why do they do that? Fourth quarter cougar quarter? Fourth quarter. <laughs> All in. All in. Thank you. I had another phrase in my mind that I shouldn't say. Publicly. <laughs> <laughs> I was very right. cool. Although today at this point, I should just throw it all out there. This is it. It's all in. There's nothing left, right? You don't get a next quarter. You don't get a do over. You do it now, or that's it. You go home, right? That's where we are. We're in the fourth quarter. So here's my question You guys are in this business because you're competitors. You don't get into a self employed business without having some sort of competitive streak. Now whether you compete with yourself or whether you compete with other people, everybody's wired differently and there's no right or wrong or bad or good. What you have to find is the trigger. We have some people in this company that are finding the little hot button to get them motivated. Um, I can tell you that there's a couple of single agents who have literally hounded me to get statistics because they are dead set on making the top 10 this year. There is one single agent that is calling through her database, telling her clients, no kidding, every day, 50 calls a day, she's got the notes to prove it, I'm trying to make top 10 in my company, who do you know that I should be talking to about buying or selling real estate? The message changes based on who she's calling. Some of her, she started with all of her friends that are commissioned sales, because she knew they would get it. They would understand that. She just said, this is my goal, I'm gonna do everything I can to get there. I've never done this in my life. This is where I want to be. So once a week, she says, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> it changes every day. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I can tell you that we, for those of you who are on Teams, we have a little email that goes around at the end of every month ranking the team members. Because buyers, agents, and team members don't get the accolades and the glory of the team leader sometimes. But they're just as competitive as the next person, right? And so we've started this year, starting in January, I track the top 10 team members based on production and send it out to them. There is a massive competition going on between team members to beat each other. I love that. I think it's, I mean, it's all good spirited. Everybody's going back and forth on it with each other in the email. I love that. Here's what I would challenge you. Find your, your trigger. Find what it is that lights your fire to really just put the foot to the gas. You got a month left. That's really it. Today's the 15th. You have 30 days left to write deals that will close, possibly. I would think 45 days right now is, is probably pushing it a little bit, or, or maybe, but maybe not. I mean, I know underwriting is fast, but we, you could have some other issues. You've got about 30 days left to hit your goals. So what is, are you going to do between now and then to make that happen? How purposeful are you going to get? What's the motivator that you're going to find? Everybody has to have something. It's different for each of you. I can't tell you what that motivator is. I would have never known with a couple of these guys that being in the top 10 single agents in the company would be something that would make them so driven. I love it. So now that I know, I'm feeding it you know, like crazy. <laughs> Whatever I can do, stoke the fire. But find that motivator for you. 
Maybe it's going into bold and saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to up the average of bold. Last year we averaged 13.7 transactions per agent through bold. I think you can blow the doors off that if you want to, but you have to make that decision. So I would really encourage you going out of here, going into the last part of the year, the home stretch, don't, don't, don't phone it in. You know, don't phone it in at this point and just say, well, the year's the year, or I, there's no way I can hit my goal. I had this crazy high goal. There's no way I can hit it. So what? Finish it strong and get as close as you can. You've got 30 good days, maybe 40, to really get some massive lead generation done. Go ahead. Oh, that was a scratch note I thought. Just, I it people like, get on like a weight loss goal and they're like, I want to lose 50 pounds before the end of the year. And it starts getting towards the end of the year and you're there, they're like, oh, I've only lost 35. You don't like, start eating and go back to your weight. Wow. You don't throw it in. Try as hard as you can to get to 50. Well, I mean, that's the thing. This is, <laughs> it's a focus question. Present and company I guess I feel, I feel like this I'm is the conversation like, that I am living in every minute of every day right now. In, in my family, we're living in it. it at work, we're, we're focused on it. I mean, we know for what we want to accomplish. We know exactly what has to happen. We know exactly how hard we have to work. We know exactly what has to get done. And I know none of us are letting go of the goal that we've, got. and if you are, we should talk afterwards. <laughs> 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 so what are you doing to motivate yourself? What are you doing to find that fire? that is unquenchable, that will carry you through the next 40 days and really hit your goals. Because you're totally capable of doing it. Here's the amazing thing. Your competition is phoning it in. I, I can promise you that. They're planning their trips. They're going to Hawaii for CE. And that's not a knock on that at all. This, understand what I'm talking about. They're planning their trips. They're planning their time off of the holidays. They're planning this. They're planning that. They're already you know, figuring out when they're going to have their vacations. And that's not a criticism. But what I'm telling you is that's an opportunity. Because when everybody else is resting, are people still buying and selling homes? They are. They just are. Your decision is, do you want to take advantage of that opportunity? People will stop door knocking once the weather gets bad. It's been windy as all get out for the last week. Walked in today, debated why I even did my hair this morning. Because it all ended up like this. But people aren't door knocking because it's not as nice. It was easy to door knock this summer. It was beautiful. We had a great summer. The troopers door knocking when it gets yucky. When the snow starts to fly. Hopefully not for two more weeks. After that, I don't care. <laughs> you do whatever it wants to do. What are you doing to really finish hard? And that, that would just be my encouragement to you is if you don't have it, look inside and figure it out. And, and drive it. And you know what? If you need to come tell me, or come tell Jacob, or come tell Shana, or tell Allison, hey, this is what is going to, you know, hold me accountable. This is what's going to push me. Come tell us. We're happy to encourage that, and we will do that for you. Just let us know. Any thoughts or comments or anything that we need to focus on that I'm not thinking about before I get people out of here a little bit early so they can go hit the phones and lead generate. Shana. Anything from you? I love it. Okay, so I will see you guys. Yes. Oh, Lindsay, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. yeah, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm, Lindsay, I'm sorry. I just to end on a high point. Go out and sell. So when you're making your phone calls and you guys are just looking for one more reason to have feel valid when you call your people that maybe you've been working with for a while. Oh, look, I'm on video. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're just looking for one more thing. So there was a big meeting uh, last week at Residential. The conventional loan product is going to be changing in January of next year. It's going to be looking um, much more conservatively at how they calculate income and lowering the max debt to income ratio. What that means is that buyers today buy less in the conventional product in the new year. So your money that you make gets you less in the new year, assuming all other factors stay the same. That's a great Buy selling out. point <laughs> for uh, people. And it can, right now, it's only Fannie and Freddie who've come out and said that they're changing the way that they look at it. 
FHA, VA, rural, HUD 184, they have not said anything yet, uh, and we don't know if they're going to change the way they look at income and debt to income ratios, but they could. The debt to ratio, did that change too for um, the uh, percentages? It went up to 40, 42? So right now they're set at a max of 45. Wow. But it's not always that you can get someone approved for that. Mm -hmm. And they're dropping down to 43. And the big deal in the new year is that when you're brokering loans, you have to be able to sell them. Because otherwise you go out of business. And the way that they calculate the income, they being Fannie and Freddie, is going to be much more harsh. Mm -hmm. And if your 43% in their new calculation decreases after we've closed the loan, the loan becomes unsellable. And companies start to go out of business companies start getting more strict and so there's a lot that's going to change for this loan product in the new year I've actually had this conversation with um, I think three of the people that I coach with on Friday I told them to contact you guys and said you need to call your lender because they can give you a great message to tell people and you know the thing is is that even if someone's not buying or selling um, and I may be wrong on this. This will impact refinances as well, correct? correct? Do you think your clients may want to know? I mean, I, I can't tell you. I have a good friend right now who's been texting me all morning who's going through a refinance. I've been trying to talk her into refi for about two years, and she finally just is doing it today. So many people just put it off, put it off, put it off. How many times do you guys see that across your, your desk? Oh, I've been meaning to do this for six months. Yeah. And then they finally what show up and do it. Yes. Okay, so yeah. yeah. So what does that look like if they go, ah, oh, it's January, okay, new year, I'm gonna go get my refinance done. And they find out there was a significant change to the program that could prohibit them potentially, or cost them more. I don't know how it's all gonna shake out. Guys, be the purveyor of information. Don't assume whether they need it or not. This is your assumption to make. Get it out there to them. If they don't need it, great, they'll file it away in their mental trivial pursuit box and know that it's there, but you will be surprised how many people need the information. And do you think the general public knows any of this? No, pick up the phone and call them. Hey, I'm sorry to bug you. You may think this is totally irrelevant. I just feel compelled to make sure you know this in case you're thinking about refinancing or buying or doing anything mortgage related in the next six months. Or if you're selling, it's gonna affect the buyer pool too. Yeah. Anything. Fellas, or Sean, sorry. So just to clarify, if somebody gets pre-qualified on November 15th, mm -hmm. and they think they're going to close in 45 days, so there's a little blip, and it pushes a week into January, <laughs> it's, and it gets um, re-evaluated the, the, the new ratio? Okay. The date is January 10th, um, and it has to do with um, full applications on or after January 10th. So if you're already in contract, in theory, you're going to be fine if you extend past that point. Mm -hmm. There's some small caveats to that if you have a really, really long contract. Um, in the past, when things like this have happened, they've said, okay, if it's if it's that you have your full application January 10th, and then three months later, because we get new construction and stuff that takes a while, they say, okay, now we're putting a new end date, um, and it's X, and everything to be recorded out by that time period. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't really know as far as, you know, will they allow extensions and stuff, but what they've said right now is uh, full applications taken on or after January 10th, and a full application has a property, it has a contract, it has full income, it has I'm going credit. to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just throwing oh, yeah. stuff at the wall. Sure, I, mean, I, mean, I can see people doing that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing the hoops that people jump to. And, and here's the thing, like, th this, is, this is why we have three of the best loan, loan officers, loan originators in the state in this building. Guys, go ask them these questions. <laughs> Don't be the purveyor of this information to your clients, okay? How many of you guys in here have a license to originate mortgages? Oh wait, two. Three. <laughs> Only three that I see. I Unless, I raise my yeah, hand. I'm like, what, 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 Christy? Do we need to talk? <laughs> um, you know, we're not the we're not the source. We are the source of the source. Be the source of the source. Your clients will appreciate it. Send them that direction, and then for what you need to know to practice well and make sure you're protecting your clients. You know what? 
They love coffee. You can bring it to them at their desk. I'm sure they'd be happy to get that, and they'd be happy to exchange and give you good information. So, so yes. More. January 1st, someone finally says, hey, I've got 10 days to get pre-qualified, find a property, do a home inspection. Home oh, inspection contract. doesn't work out. They don't come back. They start over with a new contract. It's January 12th. New rules. New rules, new rules yeah. apply. Yep. Okay. Whiteout doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys are.